editor-in-chief of Life Set, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio host Laura Ingram, and oh, I can't believe I see him here, and Fox News contributor Tucker Carlson. Good to see you both. Uh, nice Laura, you. let's start with you. It's NBC. It's CNBC. It's Univision. CNN, they're giving questions before a town hall. It's literally, let's see, the New York Times, the Boston Globe, the Washington Post, all an extension in every way imaginable of the Clinton press office. Now, I yeah, said, all the, all, all yeah. these media outlets, Sean, uh, that you just rattled off, uh, they are, they're all part of what is essentially a super duper pack for Hillary. Okay, this is beyond a super pack. This is more influential than any super pack because it controls what people see and what people hear and what people read. And the way campaigns are framed, it's still very important, even with the internet and even with talk radio and, and Fox, the way the mainstream media frames stories and rallies and, and uh, news cycles still has an enormous, uh, I think, influence on the way especially younger people feel, people who aren't all that uh, steeped in politics, who just maybe take a quick read at things. And it's everything that we always thought and confirmed in these, uh, in these WikiLeaks emails. And it's going to simply lead to more cynicism about, about the press, more distrust uh, toward the mainstream media. And uh, you know, they're, they're, they, I think they're hoping they get some more tapes on Trump so they can take the spotlight off themselves. But as usual, the finger is always pointed back at you. You know, I think, Tucker, the other thing is she admits she's one person in public and she's a totally different person behind yeah. the scenes. And she's exposed. For example, she supports open trade. She wants not only open borders, she wants an open hemisphere. Right. 600 million people can come in here. She's got friends pretty much everywhere covering up for her. She gets paid. She got a public position and a private position. She supports fracking. She doesn't support fracking. She supports Keystone. She doesn't support Keystone. The whole thing is like reminiscent of the former Soviet Union and the propaganda, you know, towards the public and the contempt towards the public. And I don't know if the public can absorb this all in 27 days. Well, the most effective propaganda, of course, is not simply to distort the truth, but not to report it at all. I mean, if an important story happens and the press ignores it, did it actually happen? I mean, so, for example, we've just seen five separate WikiLeaks document dumps in the last 48 hours. John Podesta's email, some of them are not interesting. Some of them are very interesting and deeply revealing. You go on the Washington Post website, one of the biggest and most important newspapers in the world, as of this afternoon, and there are no stories about it. There are no stories about it on the front page of their website. The only story that even refers to it is an utterly unsubstantiated claim from the Clinton campaign that this is part of a Russian propaganda effort. They don't know that that's true. They're just throwing it out there. And that's the only thing the Post covered. Over at Vox, which is a major, very highly va uh, valued um, liberal news site, there are no stories at all other than John Podesta's risotto recipe, which showed up in these emails. But all the rest of this stuff completely ignored. The press, by doing that or not doing it, devalues its own currency. This is going to be over in a month. And where are they going to be then? With no credibility whatsoever. Actually, this hurts them. This is short-sighted and dumb. And I think it's the beginning of the end of the old media order. I, I, I think it is, but unfortunately, you're right. I think a lot of people still trust those outlets when they shouldn't be trusted. They're an extension of the campaign. You know, there's even revelations. Poor Chelsea Clinton had enough sense to realize the significance and seriousness of the pay-to-play issue with the Clinton Foundation and access to her mother when she was Secretary of State. She was called a spoiled brat for, for revealing it. But then we find out, as it relates to the money they were raising with the Clinton Foundation for Haiti, Laura, that yep. they're literally separating out the Clinton donors and friends of Bill to yeah, give FOB. them access for opportunities to make money. But again, this is what all of us thought all along. When, when the Clinton Foundation ran down to do all that uh, work in Haiti, and, and much of it has been called into question, and we wondered at the time, well, is this State Department contract? I mean, how is this all working? And it turns out that at least on a few, a few occasions, and I imagine this is just the tip of the iceberg, um, that Clinton friends got preferential treatment. And Sean, the other issue that I thought, as a Roman Catholic, I found to be so disturbing is the Jennifer Palmieri comments and the Podesta comments about Catholics, especially more traditional Catholics, Catholic converts like myself. They didn't mention people by name. But the most, I think, derisive and dismissive oh, and nasty comments. 
You got, oh, you got John Then they want Podesta. to infiltrate the Catholic Church as well, according to what John He's talking about infiltrating the Catholic Church with left-wing progressive ideology. Get this, to foment revolution within the yeah. Catholic Church. Who thinks like this unless you're a, a statist Marxist, a really radical Alinskyite disciple? Let me give you a few more quickies here. Um, we know that we learn that Hillary hates everyday Americans between uh, Podesta and Palmieri. We know, uh, Tucker, that they said, I know she's begun to hate everyday Americans, but I think we should use it once. I, seriously? And then we've got what we talked about, infiltrating the Catholic Church. And also they knew that Saudi Arabia and Qatar are funding ISIS, but she told, still took their money. I mean, it's, it's breathtaking like, it's what we're learning like, here. Why are you like, laughing? It's not funny. Well, because it's every suspicion you ever had about the Clintons. It's like, true. If, if you and I are sitting around having a beer, I wonder what they're talking about over there at the Center for the Amer American Progress or the Clinton Global Initiative. They're fighting about money, right, because they're all getting rich on this stuff, and they're all needling each other behind the scenes and saying nasty things about each other over, over the spoils. They're attacking normal people, religious people, people of faith, Right? And they're also basically lying about their motivations about everything. And now we rip off the covers, and it turns out to all be true. It, so it, yeah, we're pretty impressioned, I guess. It, it's and, beyond scary. And yeah, Sean, we Sean, it's about, as it, it, it always is about with the Clintons, it's about power and it's about money. They got a lot of money, they have almost $170 million. But they always want to hold on to the power, and they dole out the goodies to their friends and others who've been good to them over the years. And yeah. that is the corruption of Washington that Trump is really running against now, and I think it's really smart. But, People but, are but fed Laura, up with well, think about this, Laura. You have the Republican establishment against them, the Democratic establishment, the media establishment against them, even the UN establishment, globalist establishment is against them. I mean, I, can anybody overcome? that united group of power, if they're all opposing you, it's not easy. Now, that's why most people become members of the establishment. It's a lot easier. It's a lot more convenient. And you go to, I guess, a lot better parties. I don't like those yeah. parties anyway, so it never bothered me. But uh, yeah, it's really hard. He's going to have a hard, hard slog. But if anyone can do it, I think he can, because he, he, he's swinging for the fences now. And I think, uh, I think he's got to do some events that now bring all of this uh, together, and, and whether it's religious liberty speech or uh, you know, really highlighting the corruption. Beyond just the rallies, I think it's time for him to go back to some of those communities, those underserved communities that he did I think that's uh, a good idea. in August. Yeah. Tucker, thanks for staying up late. I saw you on Fox and Friends this morning. Nice of you to come back. You've been missing for the action. You've been MIA. I don't know what this is all about. I've been trying to elbow my way in. Thanks for letting me come. All right, guys. Good to see you both.